Hello everyone, welcome again. So in, in my previous video, we have talked about how the analog and digital signals are connected to each other uh, by uh, ADC and DAX. So in today's video, we'll learn how the uh, data travels through wireless medium and data travels through wire. So through wire, whenever you need to transfer any data, wires support the current and current is made by voltage differences. Whenever you are trying to generate the, that uh, zeros and ones, the bits, the, the data from digital bits to electricity, how do you convert those zeros and ones to current? You use high voltage and low voltage uh, terms of zeros and ones to generate that current and combinations of high voltage and low voltage to represent combination of zeros and ones. And uh, this is how the uh, through this voltage difference, the current is generated and the receiver end when the current is received, uh, the varying current, uh, based on the varying current, the receiver will be able to decode that current to the digital form. You can reconstruct back the digital data using that voltage difference and currents. So now, now let's look at how this uh, data travels through wireless medium. So through where electricity doesn't travel. So we need, we had to use some other techniques. So Wireless technologies like radio, Wi-Fi, walkie-talkie, they, they work in a very similar manner. So here what happens, the source generates some kind of radio waves, it travels through air, the receiver receives that radio waves. Now, how the receiver will know uh, that uh, some kind of communication is being transmitted towards it? So it? The receiver uses amplitude or the intensity of the signal or frequency Frequency means the number of occurrences of that waveform per second. So if you tune the amplitude or the frequency in your receiver device, if the source is also using same amplitude or same frequency to transmit the data, you are going to receive that signal. So how this amplitude and frequency of a waveform is modulated, that uh, we'll look, uh, look after a few. But before that, we need to understand how the digital data, the zeros and ones, and voices, like I'm speaking, these things gets converted to a radio waveform. So radio wave is generated by devices called modems. Modems are present at uh, radio stations, or even at your home in your Wi-Fi router, which uses modulation and demodulation techniques to ge generate the radio waveforms from the analog voice or digital data or digital bits. So this is how the radio waveform is generated. and what is modulation? Modulation is varying the properties of that radio waveform. The radio waveform consists of many properties like amplitude, frequency, and uh, phases. So if you vary those properties in a particular way, the receiver can receive those signals if those properties are also set at the receiver. So a very good example will be the FM and AM radios that you use. So FM means frequency modulation and AM means amplitude modulation. So the radio stations that generate those uh, uh, the, the talks or any shows whenever they are hosting anything, they use amplitude modulation or frequency modulation to generate the radio waves with those particular properties. So that if we tune to that particular frequency or if we tune that particular amplitude in our radios, we'll be able to receive that signal. And uh, the Wi-Fi also works in a similar manner, but uh, if you ask why the Wi-Fi signals tends to become weak if you go farther, the answer is that our home routers or Wi-Fi, they use very little power to generate signals. So the more the power, the further it will travel. Our Wi-Fi routers are using 100 milliwatts to generate the uh, radio waves that we are receiving in our mobile phone or laptops in a, at home or at the office. But the radio stations that generate the waves, they they are using a huge amount of power to generate the radio waves. And that is the reason we can we are able to hear whatever being transmitted from the radio station throughout the entire city or uh, can cover much more bigger area as well. Now let's look at how how we can visualize the modulation technique. So I have one two here for as well. So 
So the website is pa3fwm.nl slash tools slash modulation.html. This is the URL. If you open this, you will be able to see uh, one one. You can you can imagine this point as a modem which is generating the radio waveforms. What is the amplitude from this middle point of the modem? From this middle point of the uh, generation, uh, if you if you calculate the height of the uh, this green arrow, that is the amplitude. And here you can see the size of the green arrow is is varying over time. So and and this green arrow. Uh, actually, whenever one modem generates uh, radio frequencies, they generate three radio frequencies, three carrier, three waves. The primary wave that is generated, that is called the carrier wave, and two other waves also gets generated. Those are called the sideband waves. So all of these three waves uh, have the capacity to transmit data. We won't go much deep into that. For now, let's understand how. So here you can see there are the modulation types, the amplitude modulation, the pulse code modulation and the frequency modulation. If we change the mode, the graph will be changed. And we can also increase the frequency as well. So right now I have increased it to two hertz. That means two occurrences per second. And uh, for example, the Wi-Fi routers that we use in our home, they they operate in two frequencies. One is 2.4 gigahertz and another is 5 gigahertz. So gigahertz means 1000 occurrences per second, 2.4 gigahertz means 2400 occurrences per second and 5 gigahertz means 5000 occurrences per second. And our laptops and mobile phones, whenever you turn on Wi-Fi, they, they listen to those frequencies only. That is why if, if some Wi-Fi is on nearby, it shows that one, one Wi-Fi is available to connect. And uh, yeah, so and, and another practical example will be the microwave oven that uh, we use in our homes. Microwave oven also uses a very similar frequency to heat your food. And that is why if you have a malfunctioning microwave, you turn it on and use it. Sometimes it, it can interfere with the Wi-Fi signal as well. So this is a very nice tool for uh, the electronics and tele telecommunication engineers. We want in deep much uh, for computer networking so this much knowledge should be sufficient uh, that's all for today thank you for watching the video please do like subscribe thank you